Hello everyone, my name is Rick Labello and I have been advocating for the return of the wolf to West Texas for over 40 years now. This presentation will help you to understand what has happened to the wolf in Texas and what can happen in the future. The last gray wolves in Texas were killed 50 years ago, about 200 miles east of here, north of Big Bend National Park. Today, wolves survive in Texas only in zoos, and it doesn't have to be that way. There's plenty of habitat, good habitat, where they can be released back into the wild. But it's complicated, and we need your help. So to help you understand what needs to happen, let's look at the past and look at the future as to what we can do working together to help return this wonderful animal back to its rightful place in the northern Chihuahuan Desert in an area that we call the Greater Big Bend. The Greater Big Bend encompasses over 8,000 square miles of protected areas surrounded by private lands from southern New Mexico, west Texas, and northern Mexico. Big Bend National Park is the centerpiece of the region and a hot spot for preserving the biodiversity of the Chihuahuan Desert. The national parks, like so many other protected areas, are connected to the lands around them. After spending 25 years living and working in our national parks, I can assure you that no park is an island. Because the park is connected to the lands around it, many years ago I decided that I wanted to do something about protecting Big Bend National Park to help call attention to the threats that were present then and are present today. I left Big Bend National Park 28 years ago. During the 17 year period that I worked in the park, I was a park ranger and then in 1986 I became executive director of the Big Bend Natural History Association. When I decided to leave in 1992, my friends couldn't believe it because they knew how much I loved Big Bend and the park. I even wrote a song about Big Bend. I used to sing it all the time at my evening campfire programs. I told my friends that the real reason why I left was the same reason why a young man or a woman goes off to war. I was passionate about the conservation challenges facing Big Bend National Park and I wanted to dedicate my life to living in an urban area like El Paso where I could reach larger numbers of people. When I left the park I took a job at Carlsbad Caverns National Park to work as executive director of the Carlsbad Caverns and Guadalupe Mountains Association. I finally made it to El Paso eight years later and soon became the zoo's first education curator. One of the things I learned about the Big Bend country in West Texas and the greater Big Bend was that many of the animals used to live here were extirpated during the westward expansion era during the late 1800s and early 1900s. By the time I started working in the park in 1975, the black bear, the bighorn sheep, and the Mexican wolf were gone. Thankfully, the Mexican black bear has come back on its own thanks to, thanks to a healthy population in northern Mexico. They've come across the Rio Grande, and now there's a healthy population living in the Chizos Mountains and beyond. Desert bighorn sheep have also been successfully returned to the wild thanks to breeding programs and reintroduction programs administered by Texas Parks and Wildlife. But there are many other species that may never return unless the people of Texas take action to support reintroduction efforts. The Mexican gray wolf is one of those species that still has a chance. Today I want to talk to you about efforts to return the wolf to Big Bend National Park and West Texas. Twice last year I went to Big Bend and when I went down there I was once again overwhelmed by the beauty of the night sky. It's so dark down there 
As I gazed at the heavens and looked up at the Milky Way, I said to myself and to the heavens, I forgot you were there. Living here in El Paso, we just don't think about the Milky Way. We don't think about the stars because it's so hard to see them. But when you're down in Big Bend, it's so dark, you just can't help it. As I gazed at the galaxies above, I was reminded of how our planet is so fragile. Living on our planet is like living on a spaceship and we're going through the darkness of the universe. This is our only home. We need to take better care of it. And one of the ways we can do that is by protecting our environment this, that is so essential to our survival. In 1978, this guy, Roy McBride, did more to help save the Mexican wolf than any single person alive today. The last we spoke, he was working in Florida on efforts to save the Florida panther. Roy was a fellow graduate student when we worked on our master's degrees at Sol Ross State University in Alpine. We quickly became friends, and when I was kind of low on cash, he and his family invited me to live with them for a while. I was a park ranger in 1978, and one day Roy called me when I was working at the Panther Junction Visitor Center. And he said, Rick, next time you come to town to buy groceries, I want you to come out to the ranch to show you something. It turns out Roy was hired by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to go into Mexico and capture the last remaining population of Mexican wolves. The Endangered Species Act had been passed a few years earlier in 1973 and our government was trying to save an animal that used to live in the United States but then only survived in Mexico. So with the cooperation of the Mexican government Roy was tasked with going down into Chihuahua and Durango, Mexico and capturing any wolves that he could find. He caught three of them and today all the Mexican wolves that live in the wild are the descendants of those three wolves and four others that were living in captive facilities. When I visited Roy I was so touched by seeing a newly captured Mexican wolf that Roy had told me about was almost extinct that I decided I wanted to do something to help save the species from extinction and return it to Big Bend. In 1970, the last two Mexican wolves recorded in Texas were killed a little over 200 miles east of El Paso, just north of Big Bend National Park and south of Alpine. When I was out at Roy's ranch, I was very fortunate to have an 8 millimeter movie camera that my dad had given me when I went off to college. When I saw the wolf at Roy's ranch, I said to myself, wow, I didn't even know a Mexican wolf existed. Later I realized that I had historic footage of a species that actually went extinct in the wild. The wolf in the video was one of the last Mexican wolves born in the wild, a descendant of an ancient wolf population that roamed wild and free in North America for thousands of years. Not long after that day, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service declared the species extinct in the wild in both the United States and Mexico. When I got back into the park, it was a four-hour round-trip journey just to get groceries, I wrote a letter to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The regional director wrote me back in December and told me how my friend, Roy McBride, was working on the Mexican wolf and that the first priority was finding conservation sites in Mexico and that the long-range plan called for finding release sites in the United States if they could be found. It took 20 years for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to finally put together a plan that could be adopted so that there were, when there were enough animals in captivity a reintroduction effort could begin. That happened in 1998 when the first Mexican wolves were returned to the wild in the Gila wilderness of eastern Arizona and western New Mexico. I have been working on Mexican wolf conservation efforts for over 40 years now and when I was executive director of the Big Bend Natural History Association I had an excellent relationship with the management team at Big Bend National Park. 
and as a result I started writing articles about the Mexican wolf for the park newspaper El Paisano. Most people knew nothing about the Mexican wolf and lo and behold people started reading the articles we published. One day I got a call from a lady in Richardson, Texas, Liz Sizemore, and she said, Rick, I've been reading about the Mexican wolf and I want to do something to help put this animal back into Big Bend National Park. I said, wow, I want to help you. So we formed the Mexican Wolf Coalition of Texas. After organizing ourselves and registering as a nonprofit organization, we tried something that just didn't work. We helped to reach a lot of people, and the wolf was eventually released in Arizona and New Mexico. But Texas, as we all know it, is a whole other country. We simply could not convince Texas Parks and Wildlife to do anything to help the Mexican wolf. The Fish and Wildlife Service could have done something about it, but would not then, and not today, without the support of Texas and Texas Parks and Wildlife, and rightly so. The Mexican Wolf Coalition of Texas formed in the spring of 1990 and we put together a newsletter called the Mexican Wolf Recovery Newsletter which eventually evolved into a newspaper called Lobo Howl and we were really successful. We had workshops. We spoke to the Texas Parks and Wildlife Commissioners. We raised money for the Wolf Compensation Fund. We helped to support captive breeding programs at places like Fossil Rim near Fort Worth. And I was very pleased with all the efforts that we put into this organization. But we had an approach that would not work. We were trying to make this happen in Texas without the support of the landowners surrounding the park. We figured that as long as there was a national park, you could just release wolves into the park like they did in Yellowstone and then just figure out any problems later. Today, the approach is completely different. If we're going to return wolves to the wild in Texas, we need stakeholder support. And that's the approach we're taking now. But before we can get that to happen, we have to have the support of Texas Parks and Wildlife. Back then, we had the support of the governor of Texas in 1990. Remember Ann Richards? She used to love to go to Big Bend and float the Rio Grande. She wrote this letter, and notice how she wrote in the middle of the letter how we need a board in reference to the Texas Parks and Wildlife Commissioners. We need a board that will focus on habitat for endangered species, providing more recreational natural areas, and preserving and propagating endangered species. We were really glad to have her support but because Texas Parks and Wildlife would not support our effort, and unfortunately she was not re-elected, it just didn't happen for the Mexican wolf. That is part of the history of returning the wolf to Texas. When I moved to Carlsbad, I continued my efforts to educate people about the Mexican wolf, working with elected leaders, community organizations, and individuals who wanted to help. Since moving to El Paso, wolf conservation efforts have been supported by Texas Senator Jose Rodriguez, our current representative in Congress, Veronica Escobar, the El Paso Sierra Club, Chihuahuan Desert Education Coalition, and the El Paso Zoo. This is a map that Defenders of Wildlife published showing potential dispersal wildlife corridors that wolves might use if they ever were allowed to expand their range into other areas of former wolf habitat in New Mexico and Texas. I believe that there's great habitat for wolves in Texas. A lot of it's private land, a lot of it's public land. Did you know that in this region there are three kinds of deer? There's Texas whitetail in the Davis Mountains, Del Carmen whitetail deer in the Chizos Mountains of Big Bend National Park, and the Shinati Mountains of Presidio County, and desert mule deer everywhere else. And you have pronghorn, you have bighorn, you have javelina, and now you have an invasion of exotic species reproducing like crazy, including European wild boar and owdad sheep. Wolves can help to control exotic species that are threatening native species on both private and public lands in West Texas. Right now, we're trying to kill them off by shooting them on the ground and by helicopter. It's simply not working. 
we are only touching the surface of the problem. Bringing back the wolf to Texas is not about habitat, it's about political will. Several years ago, the El Paso Sierra Club group asked me if I wanted to serve on the executive committee, in part because of my reputation as an advocate for wolf conservation in Texas. I served on the committee for several years, and I'm proud to report that over a two-year period, the El Paso Sierra Club group, with the help of the El Paso Zoo, collected over 20,000 signed letters and 5,000 signatures on petitions asking Texas Parks and Wildlife to support a plan to return the wolf to the wilds of Texas. Those who supported this effort believe that it's critical to the future of our ecosystem and the citizens of our state to preserve and protect all the parts of the ecosystem. We were very happy to learn of the new Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation We Will Not Be Tamed campaign. Bringing the wolf back to Texas will clearly demonstrate the state's commitment to this important conservation initiative that encourages all Texans to get involved in conserving the wild things and wild places of our state. Today, the only wolves in Texas live in zoos. At the El Paso Zoo, we set up a Return the Wolf to Texas Take Action Station where people could sign letters to Texas Parks and Wildlife. And with the help of our volunteers, the people we contacted signed letters without hesitation. And believe it or not, most signatures came from people who signed the letters at the Take Action Stations without having to be asked. Over the past few years, I've been so motivated and encouraged by zoo guests who have overwhelmingly showed support for wolf restoration efforts in Texas. Here is one of my favorite letters written by a little boy named Kyle. He wrote, Dude, come on. The wolves need a decent life. You don't want them to be sad. Here's a picture of the first batch of letters we gathered up and sent to Texas Parks and Wildlife. We had a photo op at Franklin Mountain State Park. Did you know that a Mexican wolf came very close to the Franklin Mountains back in January of 2017? A radio collared wolf that was part of reintroduction efforts in northern Mexico crossed the Mexican border near the Santa Teresa Port of Entry and headed towards the Oregon Mountains not far from Las Cruces and the Franklin Mountains. Today the El Paso Zoo has a new Mexican wolf habitat and plans are underway to breed wolves at the zoo to support conservation efforts. This little boy encouraged me not long ago to continue my efforts when he came to the zoo and pointed to the map and said, Dad, look, they got wolves. I was reminded of when I was a little boy going to the zoo for the first time and how excited I was to go and see animals up close. And that, my friends, is the reason why we're doing this. Not just because we enjoy the wilderness and not just because we know how protecting the wilderness is important to our own survival, but because these children are going to inherit this world that we leave for them and they deserve something better than what we have now. Saving endangered species is very important to the mission of the El Paso Zoo. But there's no way the El Paso Zoo and other zoos can do it on their own. We need to be involved with organizations like the Sierra Club and other groups working towards protecting our world and making it better.